Last month, MTV celebrated 32 years on the air. Whoa! 1981, it was the year of Jesse's Girl, number one in America, number one in Australia. You won a Grammy. It was dominating the, the videos on MTV. During those early years in your career, did you ever think about what your life as a performer would be like now? Oh, yeah, I thought a lot about it. I'm a very um, uh, driven person, and always, uh, since I was a little kid, I've always set up goals and where I wanted to be, and, and I think that's uh, a very important thing to do for people. Um, so I, I had lived it over and over and over in my head for years, and uh, when it finally hit, it was like, okay, yeah, this is familiar. <laughs> You've toured the world and America. When you come to New Orleans, what's special about this city to you? Um, there's a great vibe here. There's a couple of cities that have a really unique feel. Um, uh, Melbourne, where I'm, uh, I grew up, has one. Sydney, where I was born. L.A. certainly has a feel, though some people don't always like it. New York definitely does, not Chicago does. But, but New Orleans has its own. Uh, you can't really put it into words. It's just, it's just something you feel when you're here. I feel like I want to have like sit down and have like a mai tai or something and yeah. go throw beads at girls so they show me their breasts. <laughs> do you guys still do that? Yeah. yeah, they they do. In fact, sometimes you don't even have to throw them beads. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The title of your autobiography is "Late Late at Night," and that suggests a time when you're most alone and with yourself. What did you want fans to most appreciate about your life in the book? Oh, uh, I didn't really write it from a. Uh, a subject, objective point of view because it's it was just I wrote my story and then afterwards I realized that people were actually going to read it so it was a little disturbing because I'd been very frank in the book and um, I don't come off as you know I, I think some of them are written well most most uh, uh, autobiographies of, of musicians and stars are usually done one way they get a writer they talk in a tape recorder to the writer and the writer goes away and writes their story mm -hmm. And I wanted to write it myself because, A, because I'm a writer, and B, because my publisher saw what I'd written already and really liked my voice, so she wanted me to write it. So I wrote it all myself and didn't have someone kind of going, you know, you might not want to put that in. That's a little... So I kind of didn't... It was un completely unedited. And, uh, and it was, you know, pretty uh, warts and all. Probably the main thing. The main thing I've had back, actually, is the, the whole fact that I've had dealt with depression all my life, and people have... Um, have come back saying, you know, thanks for kind of coming out about that because it's really helped me. And because when you were young, there was not a lot known about things like depression no, and, and, I was just and OCD. A kid. So, so at what point did you come to realize that you were dealing with depression? Oh, uh, like 80, 88, 89, when it started. To, I started going to therapy, and because uh, I was really, I actually shut everything down in nineteen eighty five. I stopped touring, I stopped recording, and I just said, I'm, I'm done. I, I got to take care of my head here. And I went started getting a pretty serious Jungian therapy a couple of times a week for years. And uh, it, I, I don't therapy doesn't really heal stuff, but it certainly gives you the tools to heal it, and uh, and and you can recognize the demons, you know, that are that are in your head. So here was this demon inside of you that you were battling with as a child. You didn't even know what it was in in, in the early years, and and yet all of the, the the fame and everything that goes along with being a rock star didn't satisfy that that was battling you inside no it and that's the that's i think everybody thinks you know if i just had this house get this girl make this much money all my garbage will go away and we all feel that until we get that and realize that uh, that doesn't heal anything i mean it did momentarily certainly fame helped you know for a year or two but then it all settled back down on me and i realized you know the only way I could change it was to change inside, and that's really the only thing you can do. The outside stuff helps momentarily, but it's like a drug hit, you know? It's good while it's there, but when it goes away, you just feel twice as bad. The songs that you played over the years might mean something to you at, at, at different times in your life based on what you're going through. Have you, have you noticed that some of your hits mean different things to you at different times? Um, a lot of them uh, are just the kind of great memories. I know where I was when I and what I was feeling when I wrote that. I just actually listened to an album I had out called Tao that was like 1985. It's and uh, it's the one I did before I took a break, and um, it's a very ser spiritual searching record because I'm going to be we, we have a fan uh, five day fan thing in in Florida actually uh, at the Club Med where fans come and we just I sit around with them and we talk and play acoustic guitar and 
do songs, you know, have some soap friends coming down. So and I'm going to do the acoustic towel, the whole album acoustically. So I was listening to it, and it was it brought back a lot of kind of painful memories because they're all uh, most of the songs come from a, a dark place, you know. Otherwise, when you're happy, you don't. I don't want to ride. I just want to go out and have fun. So, so your depression did indeed become part of uh, very, part that, of your career. Yeah, that's what uh, my autobiography showed to me. Re- reading that was that um, I, I realized that there's a yin yang to everything, and that there's an upside to my depression. It's where the songs, my songs, come from. It's where a lot of my drive, personal drive, comes from, and yearning to do better and 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 uh, you know excel in certain places so uh, I, there is an upside to it <laughs> you have a very public image what's something about rick springfield the person that you'd like people to know i'm really a geek uh i wanted to be an archaeologist actually uh, i didn't have the schooling i wanted to, i love egyptology ancient egypt study of ancient egypt and uh I'd like people to understand that, that I'm more than just a pretty face. So having, having thought about that and, and, and studied that, then you must have an interesting perspective on what's going on in the Middle East in these days. Yeah, yeah, I was really thrilled when they blew up the uh, centuries-old Buddha. Trust me, I thought, that, uh, yeah, one for the Taliban. Well, well done, fellas. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I loved Egypt, and, and, and I was there as a kid, actually. I went there when I was about nine years old, and... You know, went to the pyramids and the Valley, uh, Valley of the Kings, and walked through the Cairo Museum, and and so it's really it's it's very um, uh, it's really brutal to see the change in that whole place. But um, you know, you understand it that the, uh, there's been years and years of oppression, and uh, I think I think that's the one good thing about the internet is it's shown all the oppressed peoples that not everybody is oppressed. <laughs> 